Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my chat. Um, this is episode A72 and the topic today is about gratitude. And I actually made two statements because I want to play with this a little bit more, but I'll tell you about that in a moment. So think about what you're grateful for right now. And also think about what you can be grateful for and I'll get into that in more detail in a moment. Before I jump in, let me introduce myself so I know, so you know what I'm about, why I'm here. Hi Donna, nice to see my broadcast. I haven't seen you for a while. Uh, so let me choose myself first and get you oriented. So, hi Amanda, good to see you as well. Um, my name is Barry Selby, welcome to my broadcast. This is my daily Facebook Live and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. I am an inspirational speaker, um, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Um, I recommend the book highly, I'm very biased. <laughs> so it's a great book. And uh, thank you Amanda for that praise and thank you for the love as well, Ms. Donna. I haven't seen you for a while. It's been fun to connect. Um, let me finish my introduction. I, have it for, I do have it in my head somewhere. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, help women, I'm, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's also what started these talks almost three years ago now called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Um, and today we're at episode number 872. And as I mentioned, <clears throat> Excuse me. As I mentioned, this is my daily Facebook Live, so I'll tell you at the back end where you can find the replays, and also where you can watch me live in the future. So if you're wondering why I'm talking to people you can't see because you're watching on YouTube, this is why. So I'm interacting with people directly on Facebook Live. So put that to the side. Topic. So my question to you is, what are you grateful for, and what can you be grateful for? Because those are two different questions. Excuse me, two different questions. Not yeah. Um, and also about the power of the choice. And I did a talk earlier today in a group I'm in, a Facebook Live group, which Amanda knows about, where it talks about gratitude on a very elegant and simple level, because that was a short talk. But I'll go deeper now, because this is my own personal talk, and that's where fun can have. Um, and loving the threads. I'm, I think you mean, you mean there or here. I'm not sure which one you mean, Amanda, so yes. Um, anyway, let me get on the topic, and we can talk along the way. So first of all, the obvious one, what are you grateful for? What in your life, what in your experience, what in your daily experience hab um, habits are you grateful for? Are you grateful for getting out of bed in the morning? Are you grateful for waking up when the alarm went off? Are you grateful for the new deal you just got? Grateful for the new car you got? Grateful for the chance for you to go do something? Are you grateful for the fact you can walk on two feet? I mean, there's a whole range of things you'd be grateful for. And I was going to show the jar again. I might do that. So, I'll make sure. Oh, the threads. <laughs> I was thinking of the threads in comments. You're talking, about the, the, you're talking about, yeah, you're talking about the threads. I had to think slang for a second. Thank you for that. Now I know what you mean. Yes, I do tend, I do intend to wear a decent looking shirt every day of the week, Monday through Friday, because it's a business day. So I wear business shirts. Well, these are a bit flashy for business. But thank you for that, Amanda. I appreciate the laugh. <laughs> threads, duh, of course. So I'm looking down because I have a gratitude jar that I put on the floor, which I keep by my desk, which is basically where I put, deposit every day, at the end of the day, at least three things I'm grateful for. And sometimes it's because I'm grateful because I've got a roof over my head. Or I'm grateful because I had a decent meal that day. It doesn't have to be complicated or hard, but it's that I choose to do. Now, the reason why I'm saying is it's something you can be grateful for, not something you are grateful for, because there's a difference. There are things that come to mind we can simply say I'm grateful for those things. But there are also some things that come to mind that maybe aren't so pretty, maybe aren't so ideal, but you can be grateful for them. For example, um, let me think of an example as I, as I scram through my mind for what I could talk about. There are certainly ideas about um, situations, environments, circumstances that you do not like at all and you're, you're, and you're out of. And you have so much hate and upset and wounded feelings about it, you don't know what to think about it. But if you can be grateful for the escape from it, you can actually release some of the pain and release some of the tension. And that's true in lots of areas too. So, oh, thank you, Amanda, for, for tagging all your friends, our friends, for this. So my question to you is, how much gratitude are you, are you available to? Because this is really talking about being grateful for things that are easy and being grateful for things that are hard. And having a shift where you can do that, and I've had some of those happen to me recently, where I can look at things that I'm, I'm grateful for that weren't ideal, but because I survived them, I can be grateful. And it is almost that level of it's not just like the joyful, wonderful, amazing things that happen you're grateful for. What if there are things that you go, that was close, but I'm grateful for that. You know, that's a thing I can have as a lesson. I've had circumstances where I've seen friends of mine go through incredible challenges and I'm grateful I haven't. 
not against them, just for me to recognize that even though life may be at that time and at that moment kind of flat mining and boring, nothing's happening, I can still be grateful because of the fact that I'm not suffering from some ailment that maybe somebody I know is. I had an experience yesterday, in fact. Hang on. I have a slightly itchy nose. Excuse me one second whilst I blow my nose. <laughs> Excuse me whilst I think about it. So, yesterday I was at Agape, the spiritual center I go to on Sundays in LA, and I saw my friend who I've seen, seen haven't seen for a while, um, Kyle C, spoke at the service yesterday. And he's somebody I've known for probably seven or eight years. I did see a Facebook memory pop up yesterday by coincidence where he and I were standing together with some friends six years ago. So it's been at least six years. So what he did was basically led the services. He got to be the, the main speaker for the services at Agape. And I've, I've been at Agape 25 years. That hasn't happened for me. So initially, part of me was like miffed. I was like, shit, you know, it's not cool. Not in the sense about him, it's about me. And this is the thing. It was self-reflection is what came up. Not only that, but also you're speaking because he has a new book out, um, which is called The Illusion of Money, by the way, in case you want to get it on Amazon. Yes, I'm promoting his book. <laughs> but that was a trigger for me, too, because he's got a brand new book out in hardcover. He was doing a book signing for. I was managing the line after service because there were some people lining up to get the book signed. And the I was reflecting when I did my book signing at Agape five, six years ago, I had nothing like that number of people in line. And I was, I was getting jealous, basically. Yes, I was being transparent. I wasn't, making, I wasn't being as um, neutral as I could be or as positive. But I sat for a moment, I should say I stood for a moment and reflected on what I was feeling. And what came up almost immediately was, is how what's happening here, something I can be grateful for? How can what happened there be an indicator for me that something better is happening? And what I immediately got to, because this has been going through my mind for the last three weeks, because one of my friends told me this and it just gave me the nudge, is that these talks I've been doing for the last three years called Messages from the Masculine, first of all, she had me reframe it, which is, and I will say this piece as well, is that I've said I've been doing this Facebook Live for almost three years. I call them Messages from the Masculine. What she said, which is so different, was that I'm the creator of Messages from the Masculine. And that was like, ooh, that felt good. It, it wasn't anything, it was still the truth, but the way she framed it shifted for me. And that started something for me. Um, not ego-driven, but, <laughs> but recognized for me that, frankly, all these talks I've got, 850-something talks, 870-something talks, excuse me, 60, I lost track, it's in there anyway. All these talks I have are content I can put into some sort of presentation, maybe another book. And when that happened, it's like what happened yesterday inspired me to consider that because I wasn't thinking about it before. The title had been floating around for a while because of what my friend said to me three, two, three weeks ago. But the idea of doing something with it and actually producing something, basically taking my books and transcribing it into a book, hadn't crystallized until basically this weekend. And it's funny because how things, how, this is one thing by the way, how, how spirit works serendipitously, or you could say how the universe works or how God works, whatever you want to use your terms. I use the word to, to spirit because that's my word for it. That universal thing that you call higher consciousness, so to speak. That's a whole other teaching I'm not going to get into now. Um, but what happened was I had things happen in the last few days, hints, nudges that put me on the right track. So, and this has happened before, this happened in my first book, same thing too. Spirit was like, boom, they kept nudging me in the right direction to give me the feedback. So it was great. So what happened was Friday, it was Friday. I happened to discover a website. Um, hey, Tony, what was, let me see what you said there. I'm going to catch up with Seymour. You're grateful for each second of life. One needs to have been shot, blown up, or have gone over a hundred foot cliff with a car to understand the true gift and energy of life. Are you saying that's what you went through? Um, but I understand how you feel. Yes, you can't minimize your gratitude. I definitely appreciate that. Being grateful is a good thing in life, period, because it's a doorway to freedom. It's a doorway to more goodness, because actually I'll get to that in a moment. I'm teaching that ahead of myself. <laughs> Let me back up a second. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, Tony. Um, Friday, get back to my thought. I've been looking at the thought about, okay, I, the, I was dwarfed by the task of thinking, okay, how am I going to transcribe all these talks without spending lots of money for it to go out and spend, you know, whatever it's like on rev.com, it's like, I think it's like, a, it's like $5 a minute, something like that. And I've got these talks that are 15 minutes long. If I do 25, 30 of those, that's a lot of money invested. I'm like, ooh, crap. So my, um, 
wow, you've had a journey, Sony. I appreciate what you've been through, and I feel for you. Um, but what happens on Friday, I happened to read an article and found a link to a website, and I'll give you the, the link so you can take it yourself, which is called Otter, O-T-T-E-R, or Otter, as you say in America, dot AI. It's a free transcription website. You can upload videos, audios, which I've done and tested it, and it transcribes, not perfectly, but it transcribes best it can word for word, like using Google Translate type stuff, into a written document, <clears throat> which gives me the basis for my book. So I'm already seeing hints and clues in this universe giving me nudges. So it's been really cool to have that happen. Oh, you know, about, oh, you already know about Ant. Yeah, it's, it's actually Otter with an E. I think it's, it's O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. If I'm wrong, I'll put the right spelling in there, but I think that's the way it's spelled. So yes, it's great because it's, first of all, it's free. And secondly, it's pretty accurate and it doesn't take too long. So I upload my videos and it transcribes them and I get a document I can download. I can keep the time, time, the um, time codes in or out. I can put it together or not, so up to me. And it's an awesome little tool. Secondly, something else that was interesting, because if you're someone who's, got, who's had, sometimes you've had books or um, letters you want to transcribe into the computer, this I'm not using, but I know it's out there, the latest version of the Google app on, phone, on iPhone or Android has a thing in it called lens, like camera lens. That tool let you take a picture of a page or a text or something else, and it will make it into an editable document. That's pretty cool. So you're like, that's two tools I'm giving you for free. Both of them are free anyway, so, but I won't let you know about it. So that's another one you can use. So long story short, what I'm seeing, and this happened on my other book, my first book, is that Spirit has this way of knocking down any obstacles. And that's the thing I'm grateful for, because I know it's happening now more than I did last time, which is kind of cool. So. As soon as I had a question about how I was going to do something, Spirit was like, here's the answer. So for me, in this case, was the idea about how do I transcribe several of my... Oh, you were... <laughs> hey, Katie, you were live at the same time. <laughs> hey, Katie, must say you were broadcast. Thanks for joining me and mine. I didn't see yours, so I was already live. So the thing, the lesson was, let me, let me give you a quick thing. So I'm grateful for my first book because what happened in that case was I realized when I wrote the book, it happened, in, it happened in six weeks flat and it was incredible. And it was a, such a surprise because I didn't plan on writing a book. So now I'm actually a published author, a number one best-selling author because of that book. But I had no clue what was gonna happen. And how it happened was like spirit kept going, here's the next step, here's the next step, here's the next step. And I said, yes. So I know when it comes to this next book, which I'm already, I've just said publicly, I'm doing it now. Oh shit, I just did it publicly. Um, I'm grateful because the steps are gonna show up. There's lessons in here and it's coming forward to see in the comments here. I know, thank you, Katie, I'm nice to have you here. So I may know ahead of time that I've got a new book coming out soon. I've not written it yet, but I'm gonna transcribe the things and write something from it. I'm taking a lot of some of my talks. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna figure out where, where I'm gonna spin the book because it's still true to my message, my work. But I felt, again, because yesterday's experience at Agape was such a nudge to say yes to this stuff. The, oh, what's that, Amanda? The app you know of is a dictation one. Sounds similar, different, that's fantastic, yeah. You learn one over the weekend called Rev. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so Rev.com is a pay-to-play service, just so you know. Whereas Otter.ai is free, so there's a difference there. I think Rev.com actually is manually managed. That's why they pay for it, but you get a more accurate transcription, just so you know that one. So, just so you have that information. So, Lens is part of Google of the new Google app. Excuse me, it's nothing special. It's not just the plain Google app in your phone, whether it's Android or iPhone. You can get the Lens feature in there, which lets you translate. Excuse me, which lets you um, take written text and get it into an editable document, like a text document. So, right, anyway, finishing off what I was trying to say here. <laughs> I'm grateful because I'm seeing Spirit lay out the course for me. This next journey I'm already saying yes to, and it's funny because I've been sitting with, I want to do something, I could feel something pulling me, but I don't know what it was, and now I know it's the book. There's something else going on, but there's another book coming through as well. Um, and by the way, for Miss Katie and Gina, what you're doing and what other people are doing in the group about creating masterminds. I've got one brewing about self-support and self-love. I just haven't got it titled yet. So I'll be, I'll be launching that one soon, thanks to your inspiration. So thank you for that nudge. Again, gratitude. Um, because it's tempting, it's so tempting to get into jealousy and envy. That's the thing, it's like when you can get out of that one, that's why I say, what can you be grateful for besides what you are grateful for? Is when you start learning, yeah, I believe money's more expensive than automated, it's true. So much, <laughs> man, so much feminine energy interrupting my thoughts. Amanda, I'm getting better at this because I love being around women and women do that all the time. So I'm, I'm so um, receptive to that. And thank you, thank you, Katie. And I, um, I appreciate it. 
Um, and I'm, I'm getting better at getting back to my thoughts. See, this is the thing I've been learning in Facebook Lives. Another thing I'm grateful for, having done 800 plus for Facebook Lives, I've learned how to take thoughts and like put them on hooks so I can come back to them. I was clumsy at the beginning. I'm getting better at remembering where I was so I can come back to it. Because the biggest challenge for men, as a masculine men, another teaching coming through, is that ladies, if you want to keep a man um, off his footing, keep interrupting him. Because most men are single focused and we're so um, in that single thought. If you knock us off track, we can't get back onto it. So this is an idea that we have this um, in, lack of, uh, this inability to be interrupted, but I've had practice now with all of you being on my Facebook Live. So thank you for the love and the interruption. It keeps me going. Yes, yes. So again, what I said. So what can you be grateful for versus what are you grateful for? Because I'm being very grateful now for the things that are happening in my life because yesterday that challenge I had of like, damn, I'm jealous, was like, okay, so what can they inspire me to do? And so now I'm grateful again. I mean, just it's layers, layers of this stuff. So being grateful is a lesson. Being grateful is a gift. Being grateful is an opportunity to have freedom. In the relationship realm, just to give you this framing, because <laughs> this one's going to trigger some people. If you can be grateful for your last relationship that sucked, you'll be freed up to have a better one in the future. As simple as that sounds, but it's a true lesson I can speak from experience. I know some of you can too. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate the love. So this is the thing. If In the area of relationship, because that's my speciality especially, yeah, especially, too many specials. Um, <laughs> can you be grateful for some of your past mistakes? Can you be grateful for some of your past relationships? Can you be grateful for past... Um, experiences in your relationships. If you can, it frees you to be, be forward for the future. Now, some of that may require you doing some forgiveness work because it's not always easy to be grateful for things in the past where you're still judging the crap out of them. But if you can be grateful for them and you can come to a place of forgiveness, then first of all, you release the, par the past challenge, the past stuff. Hi, Steve. But you can also be open to the possibility of the future, which can be better than it was in the past. Because one of the traps I know happens in relationships is if you don't know how to release the past by forgiveness and gratitude, then you tend to repeat it again in the future. It's the way its spirit works in my life, maybe not in yours, maybe not in my life, is that lessons keep repeating until we learn them. You might know the feeling. So my invitation again, just to summarize this, because I want to keep this somewhat, just checking the clock here, keep it somewhat succinct, is to have this be a um, simple teaching, is being grateful for what you, knowing what you can be grateful for off the top is easy, but then what you can be grateful for may be more challenging, but when you can do that, Yes, there you go, Amanda. Grated, grateful plus forgiveness equals freedom. Gold nuggets, thank you. <laughs> but it's really the truth, is when you can learn to, be for, learn to be grateful for things that maybe weren't easy at the time, when you can be grateful for things that didn't go the way you thought they were going to go or you hoped they were going to go, not falsely, not just say, yeah, I'm grateful for that. No, when you can honestly, authentically connect your gratitude inside for what happened, or at least from the experience you had from what happened, because let me be clear, because some experiences you can't be grateful for, I understand that totally. But if you learn something from that experience and you're better off because of it, then you can be grateful. So my invitation to you is to look at how you can be grateful for things that maybe didn't go out the way you planned. Now, I'm sure you're pretty grateful for things that were easy. That's already done. If not, practice. I do recommend a gratitude jar, as I mentioned. I happen to have one myself. Um, if you use a journal, that's fine too. R writing it down is important, by the way. That's another piece of the, of the um, physiology of who we are as humans. Saying that you're grateful for things is a great start, but writing down is more important because it activates more muscles in the body, which tracks the, which um, uh, impacts the cells. So by running about gratitude, you get really, really get clear in who you are. So, well, thank you, Amanda. So you're having had so many small gifts today that are making big vibrations in your mind in this talk, and I will honor them. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So leaving you with some homework. Yes, homework. I'm giving you homework. Is write some of the things to be grateful for. If you don't already have a gratitude, um, outlet, whether it's, a, whether it's a journal or a jar as I use, start today or start tomorrow if you don't have time today. Write down at least three things every day you're grateful for, every day, and see what happens. I've been doing that now for since, um, I'll get, I'll get, I've been doing it since January 1st, so it's like the beginning of the year just to be clean, so going through the whole end of the year, and I'll, fill, I'll enter the jar at the end of the year and have like basically over a thousand things I'm grateful for. Three a day for 365, that's going to be good. Um, so Amanda, thoughts on handwriting things versus typing. From what I've learned, and I don't like it myself because I'm a typist, not a handwriter. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't write by hand much of the time. Is handwriting is more impactful because typing doesn't activate as much um, physical muscles as, as handwriting does. Because typing, 
is pretty much just your fingertips and your, and your wrists, whereas handwriting uses the whole arm, which is more impactful and it's more visceral. So basically for activating your own um, physiology, the more muscles you activate when you're doing it, the better. That's why saying that you can be grateful for is less impactful than writing them down. So yes, Kate, you're absolutely crazy. Gratitude journals are life-changing. I'm using the jar because it's more physical and I'm not much of a journal type person. That's just me. But the jar has been really useful. In fact, hang on one second. I'm going to grab a prop. Don't go anywhere. Here we go. I'm going to dig it out. Just to see, so, so you see I'm not making it up. Let me position that a bit the other way. All right, let me say here. Yes, the, the neuro, neuro component makes sense. Yeah, so this, ta-da. <laughs> What's that side? It's my gratitude jar. As you can see, it's kind of full already. That's because it's got almost uh, 10 full months worth of stuff in it. So the gratitude jar is my, is my own um, personal expression of gratitude because it keeps me centered. It's something I do every day. And if I miss a day, then I have actually done it where I do it the next morning because I, I sometimes I was like, go back so late, I forgot about it and went to bed. It only happened twice. Let me be honest, happened twice. So I put it in the journal the next morning because I wanted to make sure I stayed on track. So thank you, Katie. I'm glad you like that. I'm a wizard. What am I, Harry Potter? <laughs> thank you, Amanda, for that love. So summarizing. So I want to this call up. So be quick. <laughs> um, Amanda, do it in the evening because for me, I'm being grateful for things I've already done for the day. In my okay, I'm getting. I'm gonna. I'm gonna plug something here because you said it. You said this. I do um, in my self love guided meditation that I offer. I have an AM meditation and a PM meditation. The AM, PM, AM meditation includes intention setting for the day. And PM meditation includes gratitude for the day. So I, for me, practicing gratitude at the end of the day after the fact versus intentions in the morning. So for me, morning setting intentions, evening grateful for the day that happened. So that's my preference. You, can, you might find gratitude something you'll do in the morning. It's up to you. I generally find that I use things that happened for me during the day that I experienced or what I did that I can write down at the end of the day is what works for me best. So... You can start the jar. Great, you're gonna start the jar thing. Yeah, just you know, I went to um, Big Lots and got one. It's cheap, you know. That works like a like a confectionery jar, like candy jar. That worked great. It's big enough. Although um, it's getting stuffed, but I've got two months to go and it'll be complete. So there, that's what it is. Yeah. So aim, intention, PM, gratitude. Yes. There you go, Amanda. Um, so I will put comment. I will put a link in the comments to my self love guided meditation because it does have that included, um, and you get to have my voice in your ear if that works for you. Great. <laughs> um, Actually, I was actually on a, a, an interview too. Something else I'm grateful for. I had an interview today for a summit that airs next month that we talked about self-love and self-support. So I was in my wheelhouse. It was a lot of fun. And we talked about gratitude there. And we also talked about self-love as a practice. So my self-love guided meditation, um, I'm giving as a gift in that summit. Without the audio track, you have to get the audio tracks from my own version. So having said all that, I thank you for watching. Um, in the links, in the comments, I'll put in the link uh, my books that I did mention it and my self-love guided meditation and a link to chat with me if you have some stuff about a relationship you want to sort out and figure out. That'll be my, that's my gift to you as well. So um, so the links will be in the comments. You'll find this when I sign off. And what else? Oh, the replays. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, how dare you? You should be here already. <laughs> I thank you for watching. If you are watching this one, thanks for the love and support. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Katie, and thank you anybody else who was in there. Um, I go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week on my personal page at seven days a week. So you can find me at Barry Selby on Facebook. You can watch me there live every day at 5 p.m. Um, if you want to the replays, they're on my business page on... Um, <laughs> all the love's coming through. Thanks for the love. Um, I love you too, Katie. Thank you for the love. And your, your joy is always effervescent and fun to watch. So replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. You can like my page and watch them there, although there's only about three, 400 of them. The rest didn't get there for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I am putting them onto YouTube, although last night Facebook stopped downloading my Facebook Live, so I'm not sure if it'll keep happening. But I was. You're welcome, Amanda. Um, my Facebook Lives also go to my YouTube channel. We can see at least 870 of them. The last two haven't gone out yet. But if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can, you can watch the, ch the broadcast there. You can scan through for titles and find the ones that speak to you, that resonate for you, or that trigger you. And you can watch them there. So with that, I thank you for watching. Again, links will be in the comments for those three things. Um, and that's about it. I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same back channel. And uh, take care of yourself and think about what you're grateful for. And I'll see you again soon. Take care. <laughs>